Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video in bonding and molecular structure. So let's get moving. Bam! All right, today we're going to be doing bromine pentafluorides, molecular geometry, and oh, so much more. So bromine pentafluoride, like the Pentagon, has five sides to it. So bromine pentafluoride, that's BRF5. We're going to look at the periodic table, get the number of valence electrons for bromine. So that's seven. Fluorine, seven. There are five of those fluorines. We're going to sum these numbers up. We're going to get 42. We're going to divide this by two. We're going to get number of pairs of electrons. Number of pairs of electrons are 21. The least electronegative element goes in the middle. That would be the bromine. That's why that's in the middle. The fluorine, surround it. Okay, now the question is, hmm, is bromine period three or greater? It most certainly is, and that's why I can fit all those fluorines around it. It is hypervalent. Okay, so now we're going to place pairs of electrons between the central element and the outside elements. That gives me this here. Now we're going to place pairs of electrons of, on as lone pairs or non-bonding pairs on the outside elements. Okay, so do we have any pairs of electrons left over? We most certainly do. So how many pairs? One more pair. What's the next rule? To dump it in the central element. So that's what we've done is we've dumped this in the central element. Bromine is certainly hypervalent. It can exceed the octet rule, and that's why that has happened there. Okay, we're going to verify the octet rule for fluorine because it's period two, and fluorine must have an octet. We're going to tidy up this um, Lewis dot structure with drawing lines for bonding pairs of electrons and still keeping the dots as lone pairs of electrons, and this is the structure that we got right there. We got a central bromine there that's bonded to five fluorines singly, uh, single bonds that is, and then a lone pair of electrons on that bromine in the center. Okay, the A for the axe-like structure, the A is the bromine. The X, there are five bonding regions around that bromine, so it's AX. Five. And then there is an E on the central element. That's a lone pair of electrons on the central element. So it's AX5E. Boom! That's what that is right there. Now, how many bonding regions? Okay, there's five bonding and one non-bonding. So from either the five bonding and one non-bonding or the AX5E, you're going to get the name of square pyramidal. And here that is right there, square pyramidal. So what's the bond angles for square pyramidal, it is, well, you've got a lone pair of electrons on that central region here, and it's going to compress those other bond angles, so they would be expected to be 90, but they are not. They're going to be something less than 90. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to get the hybridization. That is S, P1, P2, P3, D, D2. Ah, it's SP3, D2 hybridized. That's SP3, D2 hybridized. Okay, now we're going to try to get the polarity of this molecule here. So, I'm going to show you this structure right here. I'm holding on to the lone pair of electrons there for you. Hopefully you can see that. I'm still holding on to the lone pair of electrons. Okay, it is square pyramidal. That's a square. There's the square and then the pyramid shape. Okay, it's bonding angles of less than 90 because this lone pair that I'm holding on to is compressing these bond angles right over here. Okay, and so is this symmetrical or asymmetrical? That's one of the questions. Also, does this have um, a polar bond in it? Most certainly, bromine and fluorine have a difference in electronegativity, so there are polar bonds throughout this molecule. That first criteria has been satisfied, but is this a molecule that is symmetrical or asymmetrical? Well, to me, it's obvious. This side is different than this side. Square pyramidal is always asymmetrical. Square pyramidal is always polar because you got that central domain here, or central, um, uh, uh, you have a lone pair on the central region, and that's asymmetric to this other side. So this is always polar. So I'm going to write that down here for you. Got that? It's always polar. Okay. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and the 50th anniversary of Disneyland. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and win. What year was the 50th anniversary for Disneyland of which this hat came from? I want you to figure that out on your own. Have a great day. See you later. Bye now.